Hello everyone, today we're reading comment the third paragraph of the 14th chapter of the 5th book of von Clausewitz von Krieg. Its title being By Irregular Requisitions, which is the third way of subsisting in an army. The text follows. This is unquestionably the simplest and most efficacious means of subsisting troops, and it has been the basis of all modern wars. It differs from the preceding way chiefly by its having the cooperation of the local authorities. The supply in this case must not be carried off forcibly just from the spot where it is found, but to be regularly delivered according to an equitable division of the burden. This division can only be made by the recognized official authorities of the country. In this all depends on time. The more time there is, the more general can the division be made, the less it will press uh, on individuals and the more regular will be the result. Even purchases may be made with ready money to assist in which way it will approach the mode which follows next in order, magazines. In all assemblages of troops in their own country there is no difficulty in subsisting by regular requisitions. Neither, as a rule, is there any in retrograde movements. On the other hand, in all movements into a country of which we are not in possession, uh, there is very little time for such arrangements, seldom more than one day, which the advance guard is the habit of preceding the army. With the advance guard, the requisitions are sent to the local officials, specifying how many rations they have to have ready at such and such places, as these can only be furnished from the immediate neighborhood, that is, within a circuit of a couple of miles round each point, the collections so made in haste will never be nearly sufficient for an army of considerable strength, and consequently, if the troops do not carry with them enough for several days, they will run short. It is therefore the duty of, of the commissariat to economize what is received, and only to issue to, to those troops who have nothing. With each succeeding day, however, the embarrassment diminishes, that is to say, if the distances from which provisions can be produced, pro procured in pro uh, increase in proportion to the number of days, then the superficial area of which the contributions can uh, be levied increases as the squares of, uh, of the distances gained. If on the first day only four square miles have been drawn uh, upon, on the next day we shall have sixteen, on the third th thirty-six, therefore on the second day twelve more than on the first, and on the third day twenty more than the second. Of course this is a mere rough estimate of what may take place, subject to many modifying circumstances which may intervene, which the principle is that one district may not be capable of contributing like another. But on the other hand we must also remember that the radius within which we can levy m may increase more than two miles a day in width, perhaps three or four, in many places still more. The due execution of these requisitions is enforced by detachments placed under the orders of the official functionaries, but still more by fear of responsibility, punishment and ill-treatment which, in such cases, like a general weight, presses on the world population. However, it is not our intention to enter into details into the world machinery of commissariat and army subsistence. We have only results in, uh, in view. The result to be derived from a common sense view of all the circumstances in general and the view which the experience of the wars since the French Revolution tends to confirm is that even the largest army, if it carries with it provisions for a few days, may undoubtedly be subsisted by contributions which, commencing at the moment of entering a country, affect at first only the districts in the immediate vicinity of the army, but afterwards, in the course of time, are levied on a greater scale over a range of country always increasing and with an ever-increasing weight of authority. This resource has no limits except those of the exhaustion, impoverishment and devastation of the country. When they stay of an invading army uh, is, uh, is of some duration, the administration of this system at last is handed over to those of, in the highest official capacity, and they naturally do all they can to equalize its pressure as much as possible and to alleviate the weight of the tax by purchases. At the same time, even an invader, when his stay is prolonged in his enemy's country, is not usually so barbarous and reckless as to lay upon that country uh, the entire burden of his support, thus the system of contributions of itself gradually approaches to that of magazines at the same time, 
without ever ceasing altogether, sensibly losing any of that influence which it exercises on the operations of the war. For there is a wide difference between a case in which some of the resources which have been drawn from a country are replaced by a case of an army which were replaced by supplies brought uh, excuse me, from more distant parts, the country, however, still remaining substantially the source on which the army depends for its supplies, and the case of an army which, as in the 18th century, provides for all its wants uh, from its own re uh, resources, the country which it is operating contributing, as a rule, nothing towards its support. The great difference consists in two things, namely the employment of the transport of the country and its ovens. In this way, the enormous burden of an army that incomes which is always destroying its own work, a military transport train, is almost got rid of. It is true that even now no army can entirely do without subsistence wagons, but the number is immensely diminished and little more is required than sufficient to carry the surplus of one day until the next. Peculiar circumstances, as in Russia in 1812, may even gain compel an army to carry an enormous train and also field ovens, but in the first place these are exceptional cases, for how seldom will it happen that 300,000 men make a hostile advance of 130 miles upon almost a single road, and that through countries such as Poland and Russia in shortly before the season of harvest. And in the next place, any means of supply attached to an army in such cases may be looked upon as only an assistance in case of need, the contributions of the country being always regarded as the groundwork of the whole system of supply. Since the first campaigns uh, of the French Revolutionary War, the requisition system has formed constantly the mainstay of their armies. Their armies opposed to them were also obliged to adopt the same system, and it is not all, uh, at all likely that it will ever be abandoned. There is no other which can be substituted for it with the same results, as bo both as regards in simplicity and freedom from restraint, and also as respects energy in prosecution of the war, as an army is seldom distressed for provisions during first three or four weeks of a campaign, whatever direction it takes, and afterwards can be assisted by magazines. <clears throat> we may, excuse me, may very well say that by this method war has acquired the most perfect freedom of action. Certainly difficulties may be greater in one direction than in another, and that may carry weight in preliminary deliberation, but we can never encounter an absolute impossibility, and the attention which is due to the subject of subsistence can never decide a question imperatively. To these, there, there is only one exception, which is a retreat through an enemy's country. In such a case, may uh, many of the inconveniences connected with subsistence meet together. The operation is one of a continuous nature, generally carried on without a halt worth, um, worth speaking of. There is therefore no time to procure provisions. The circumstances under which the operation commences are generally unfavorable. It is therefore necessary to keep the troops in masses, and a dispersion in cantonments or even any considerable extension in the width of the column cannot be allowed. The hostile feeling of the country precludes the chance of any collection of contributions by mere orders issued without the support of a force capable of executing the order. And lastly, the moment is most auspicious for the inhabitants to give vent to their feelings by acts of hostility. On account of all this, an army so situated in, is generally obliged to confine itself strictly to its previously prepared lines of communication and retreat. When Bonaparte had to retreat in 1812, it was impossible for him to do so by any other line but the one upon which he had advanced, on account of the subsistence of his army and if he had attempted any other he would have only plunged into more speedy and certain destruction. All the censor therefore passed on him by even French writers as well as by others with regard to this point is sheer nonsense. So, as we were saying before, here we illustrate the third mean of subsistence of an army, which is the one uh, carried out to these regular requisitions with the uh, general cooperation of the um, civilian authorities, but on a large scale. That is to say, uh, not just local requisition, but literally uh, making, you know, uh, supplies coming from, from large areas, right, from different regions sometimes. Von Clausewitz analyzes 
how this takes place uh, and focusing especially on the difficulties on a, in enemy territory, right? Because at home it's kind of easy, right? Because you rule the same territory you, you are in, so uh, it's easy to, and, and there is specifically a political and social interest to, um, in case of uh, either invasion at that point, at least, but as mm, you know, not much of, of the others counter at some point, but where you're gathering main forces for in your own territory, but specifically when the enemy's invading you, right? And that is valid, in fact, conversely, for, for the, the other case in which, um, you know, is that you are into an enemy territory and you mm, have some limitations relatively to the cooperation of the local land in the first place. But von Clausewitz also highlights that the system through force requisition or, you know, this broader uh, threat, this deterrence, um, can be carried out, right? Uh, more or less difficultly, but still there, so that uh, the author arrives to the point of saying that war is being completely freed of such restraints, inasmuch you can always found enough um, supplies in, in, th in that system, and therefore armies can move freely, you know, here and there, uh, with increasing or decreasing difficulties, but still having the possibility of doing it. Right, and it's fairly simple paragraphing, telling the truth in spite of the greater length. So, by regular requisitions, from Clausewitz, right? This is unquestionably the simplest and most efficacious means of subsisting troops, and it has been the basis of all modern wars, right? Because you literally make pouring um, a lot of stuff, but uh, you know, diluted from from large area that will send the, all these supplies concentrated where your army stays, right? And it's the it's the most obvious and also the one that meets, if you want, more with the strategical and political needs, right? Because it encompasses very wide areas that must have not just a military uh, reason for it, right? On the point of the bayonet as a requisition, uh, a force requisition, but, you know, they have a motivation that goes beyond, in a way. Maybe it's still under threat because of deterrence, and still this is a war, so uh, at the end of the day, that's the, the, the moving factor in um, also in political terms. But still, for, you know, the sake of how these armies, uh, these states now, and, and the Napoleonic era in Europe have, you know, used to function, Right. This also started, von Clausewitz says, as to be fully functional with the f wars of the French Revolution. These, uh, you know, wars that have freed such huge amounts, you know, have began properly mass uh, warfare in a sense, and uh, um, where the nation state works all at once to to to, pour the, to to bring all these men and all the resources, the supplies they need on for on the field. Right and require this functionalization of the uh, subsistence system on a on a wider scale. Then von Clausewitz says it differs from the preceding way chiefly by so we, we he were talking about the lo essentially the local requisitions carried out by the army itself, right? And these uh, these are four system uh, this four ways, and as we've seen they overlap, right? Also in this in, in this paragraph von Clausewitz says, you know. In fact, now he's talking about the previous one and how it differs because they compenetrate each other naturally, but also f refers to the, the last one uh, that is the one of magazines. I will see better. And so it, it's always a uh, fluid right, um, system that we're talking about that is integrated with all the others. And it differs from the preceding way, because it says, chiefly by its having the cooperation of the local authorities. That is, for some reason, the local authorities obey, right? Um, and this supply, in this case, must not be carried off forcibly just from the spot where it is found, but be regularly delivered according to an equitable division of the burden. And that's also why it's done, because it's recognized uh, that uh, even in, you know, it's simply easier for even from the perspective of the future, or the fate of those areas where this army is crossing, that you know it's better to, you know, to to bring in supplies so that there is no uh, persistent damage that can come at the root of st structurally on the local level, right? So for Clausewitz says this division can only be made by the recognized official authorities of the country. 
so so uh, authorities that have a certain uh, a certain capability in the first place of literally putting all these resources in motion to make them cross you know, consistent mm. distances. Foucault says, in this all depends on time, as we realize, because these are also you know important or or um, you know important operations must be organized properly. And the more time there is, the more general can the division be made, the less will it press on individuals, and the more regular will be the results. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything fluidifies naturally and um, increases also in intensity after a while. Naturally, this also depends on the broader pressure that exists uh, for this to happen. So von Clausewitz is not making the point that this always happens magically. You must still have that that reason. Right, and we will see how in certain cases that thing is not, and also things can become dangerous, particularly dangerous, also by just by demanding in, in enemy territory. Uh, and Foucault says even purchases may be made with uh, with ready money to assist, right? In which way it will approach the mode of, uh, which follows in the next or order that is the magazines, because literally you pay for stuff that is already stocked that is there. To be used or for for other purposes, but now the army comes to um, to re, re require. In all assemblages of troops in their own country, there is no difficulty in subsisting by regular requisitions. Mm -hmm. I was saying before, neither uh, so in friendly territory it's okay. Um, and as a rule, is there any in retrograde movements? Because even in there, the, you know, still receiving. Uh, doesn't matter where you, you you advance or retreat in that case, right? On the other hand, in all movements into a country which we are not in possession, there is very little time for such arrangements. Time, right? Uh, the fact we are in friendly territory helps on time as well because everything is easier to program. When you invade a country and you don't even know you know, even the enemy, did this people leave there, know where you will come in some places or another. When you, it's so everything is, can't be arranged in a sense. So there is a less time to do this, and this creates problems. So Foucault says seldom more uh, in time terms of time than the one day which the advance guard is the habit of preceding the army. It is the army is advancing, the vanguard says to the, to to do, reaches those places the army will have to cross like in one day before and says uh, or a little more and it says you know prepare enough stuff because you know tomorrow the the big one is coming so uh, with the advance guard from Claudius says the requisitions are sent to the local officials specifying how many rations they are to have ready at such and such places. Naturally, local authorities have a logistical understanding of the the territory, so they uh, they they are in control of supplies. They have uh, force on their own, right? It's a kind of police. So, as these can only be furnished from the immediate neighborhood, that is within a circuit of a couple of miles round each point, the collections so made in haste will never be nearly sufficient for an army of considerable strength. Right, and consequently, if the troops do not carry with them enough for several days, they will run short, because literally in the first day, if you don't have that prearranged system, you you don't have, uh, in this distance of two miles, fundamentally range, you can exact provisions, uh, uh, in the same day, enough food, right, in case of larger army. So that's why you have have train we've seen last time, uh, train supplies, wagons, stuff, and so on. Even maybe just just for a few days, because as we'll see now, the more you, the longer you stay in the the countryside, in this country, I mean, uh, and the more um, will come to you in the following days exponentially. Von Clausewitz says it, it is therefore the duty of the commissariat to economize what is received and only to issue to those troops who have nothing, because there is a commissariat within the army that is in charge of this distribution, as we have seen. If you don't billet the troops, if the there is this form of, of subsistence. And with, with each succeeding day, however, the embarrassment diminishes. That is to say, if the distances from which provisions can be procured increase in proportion to the number of days, 
then the superficial area over which the contribution can be levied increases as the squares of distances gained. Right, because here it's ideally believed that, um, however, it's also practically done by approximation that the 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 say these collecting parties that will leave the in search for supplies uh, in in this circle, this square that uh, will enlarge gradually, covering ever more surface every day. So you know, hopefully, disarming uh, you know, exacting and and putting in motion this this system of. Of, of supplies, right, um, and w in enemy territory, right, because otherwise, uh, as we've seen, pre-arrangements could be made more profitably, and therefore, so you know, the the the, the, the more time passes, the more uh, you know, it's not an algebraic sum, but uh, literally a multiplication, um, a, a squaring. So, uh, von Kolb says, if on the first day, for example, uh, only four square miles have been drawn drawn upon for those to 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 square. Uh, uh, side. Uh, on the next day, we shall have 60, right? Uh, because it's 4. Uh, on the third, 36, because it's 6 miles, and therefore, on the second day, 12 more than, the fir than on the first, and on the third, 20 more than the second. So that's the actual quantity of supplies that has been collected. As you understand, it's exponentially rising, and therefore, it's enough at some point to maintain even larger armies. And von Clausewitz naturally says, of course, this is a mere rough estimate of what may take place, subject to many modifying circumstances which may intervene, of which the principle is that one district may not be able of contributing like another. But on the other hand, we must also remember that the radius within which we can levy may increase more than two miles a day in width, perhaps three or four, or in many places still more. The due execution of these requisitions is enforced by detachments placed under the orders of the official functionaries, but still more by the fear of responsibility, punishment, and ill-treatment, which in such cases, like a general weight, presses on the world population. All right, because here, the population may not be so cooperative, for obvious reasons. You are the invader, you are asking them for food and stripping them of their possessions, and uh, you don't you haven't even pre-arranged the thing, so this is actually the, the moment in which things can go wrong, more, more simply, um, at least for the sake of this momentary supply. Um, so, von Clausewitz says, however, it, it is not our intention to enter into the details in the wall machinery of commissariat and army subsistence. We have only results in view. Mm -hmm. That is to say, yeah, these things happen, they're pretty brutal, but here we have just to realize that they happen the way they are, and we must properly focus on what is, for the sake of the theory of the art of war, but what you know, what you can expect to get in practice for subsisting your army, for whichever reason this uh, this is happening. Uh, I mean, independently, excuse me, on you know whether people are rebelling or not, uh, which is another thing you have to take care of because it's uh, it's also tactical and strategical alike. This is not logistics. So Foucault says the result to be derived from a common sense view of all the circumstances in general and the view which the experience of the wars since the French Revolution tends to confirm is that even the largest army, if it carries with it provisions for a few days, may undoubtedly be subsisted by contributions which, commencing at the first at, at the moment of entering a country, affect at first only the districts in uh, in the immediate vicinity of the army. But afterwards, in the course of time, are levied on a greater scale over a range of country always increasing and with an ever increasing weight of authority. This resource has no limits except those of exhaustion, impoverishment, and devastation of the country. Right, the thing normally works. Right, uh, if an army uh, marches into it's literally the, an army. Right, a professional army. We're, we're not in the uh, you know, Stone Age. This is something that you know. If arrives, it's not that you know, guerrilla can can uh, crush uh, for in a blink of an eye just because they, they can. No, this is literally the punchiest thing you can find, and um, they're going to be crushed. Mm -hmm. uh, you would say, oh, what about Spain? Yes, but that was first of all backed by you know foreign powers and still with a mass mobilization of individuals in revolt that however had you know the French army stayed uh, you know in other circumstances but with then threat not being there but different international situation would have you know 
would have not been enough to to, uh, to get rid of the French. Uh, but you understand here the exhaustion, impoverishment, the devastation of countries. These are things that you know. Yeah, uh, the the longer you stay, as we've seen in the previous paragraphs, in in one place, it's obvious you're gonna consume most of the resources, and we've seen that fundamentally. Uh, it, it it's become uh, in, in not in optimal, but let's say on an average conditions, normal for armies to advance speedily, just by basically staying one day on the spot, and and uh, passing on the next one day, which doesn't even Im impact dramatically the, the local resources, even in enemy country, given that at least there is no resistance, there is no uh, further you know problem uh, in, in an average European countryside, let's call it this way. So Foucault says, when the stay of an invading army is some duration, the administration of this system at least is handed over to those in the highest official capacity and they naturally do all they can to equalize its pressure as much as possible and to alleviate the weight of tax by purchases. At the same time, even an invader, when he stays prolonged in his enemy's country, is not usually so barbarous and reckless as to lay upon that country the entire burden we support. Thus, the system of contributions of itself gradually approaches of the, uh, of that um, to that of magazines, and at the same time, without ever ceasing altogether, sensibly losing any of that influence which is uh, which it exercises on the operations of the war. For there is a wide difference between a case in which some of the resources which have been drawn from a country are replaced by supplies brought from more distant parts, the country however still remaining substantially, the source of which the army depends for its supplies, it's important to bear in mind, um, that is, uh, yes, yeah, so you can have the train can have supplies coming from somewhere else, but naturally the, the most impacted the, in that term is for for armies of Napoleonic, the Napoleonic era in average size is the country where to stay, right? Because we have seen it become become so big that it could be otherwise. Uh, not that in past it was dramatically different, but now it kind of increased the fact that it's the bulk that is has to be, you know, has to. It's so heavy this thing that it has to literally skip over, you know, as speedy as possible over these countries because otherwise it would basically uh, suck it dry, right? Uh, and and the and and lack in fact the 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 necessary supplies and the case of an army is that this tells you how mobile that warfare had come to, to be. In fact, for Clausewitz, as we were saying before, had something to to add regarding to this. And the case of an army which, as in the 18th century, provides for all its wants from its own resources, the country which it's, it is operating contributing, as a rule, nothing towards its support. The great difference consists in two things, namely the employment of the transport of country and its opens. Right? In this way that the enormous burden of an army, that in that incubus which is always destroying its own work, a military transport train is almost got rid of. Right? If you manage to find local means of transportation, um uh, to literally carry out this shift you know, this 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 shifts of, of supplies and the opens where you cook um, mostly bread, because as we've seen, that's fundamentally both most about the, the also the what, what you have your own supplies is about floor, and you have to, to cook it are crucial, and these are big things, right? These these ovens uh, must be uh, are so large or so many to to satisfy all these mouths, because um, and and not only here, if we could just about the, the here, think about just the same, the sheer energy to transportation of all the, you know, imposing equipment. Here it's meant. Think about the horses; they naturally need something else, as we've seen. Too, but the important here is that if you find the, those means of transportation in the country and ovens on a at a local level, you are gonna get rid of this. Foucault is saying it's a nightmare. The thing of of having a a, a military transport train, right? You you. Basically, modern armies can't do without that, but it's, you know can be just enough for that extra that is required for this otherwise mm, functional way of crossing the countryside with just living off the land um, on a regular um, circumstances. Because the the train actually 
brings a lot of problems because if you actually need it, it's because um, you also have to make it clo be close to the army because otherwise you couldn't supply it. So uh, the problems of coordinating the, the, the thing it, it are increasing and adding to other uh, other other problems, other energy consumption, so on. So it's exponential in many ways. So von Klobitz says, it is true that even now no army can do entirely without some subsistence wagons. Because we've seen that for, for, since the wars of the French Revolution, th this system had um, got rid of most of the wagons because it, it could, you know, now the army couldn't um, even imagine they could have enough train, if we, they were so large they could have enough train to be subsisted by it. So they had necessarily to find to extensively this way of living off the land, more than previous times. Uh, but the number, from what it says, is immensely diminished, right? It's in fact shrank, and little more is required than sufficient to carry the surplus of one day until the next. Peculiar circumstances, as in Russia 1812, may even again compel an army to carry an enormous train, and also field ovens. But in the first place, these are exceptional cases, for how seldom will it happen that 300,000 men uh, make a hostile advance of 130 miles upon almost a single road. White other, you know, wait, wait other, you know, uh, 110 years. <laughs> but those are in fact the different times, really. Um, and uh, and and that true countries such as Poland and Russia, and shortly before the season of harvest. And in the next place, any means of supply attached to an army in such cases may be looked upon as only an assistance in case of need, the contributions of the country being always regarded as the groundwork of the wool system of supply. For course it says, since the first campaigns of the French Revolutionary War, the requisition system has formed constantly the mainstay of their armies. The armies opposed to them were also obliged to adopt the same system for, uh, excuse me, and it is not at all likely that it will ever be abandoned. There is no other which can be substituted for it with the same result, both as regards its simplicity and freedom from restraint, and also as, res as respects energy in the prosecution of the war. Right? As we've seen, this is the, the fastest way, the most economical by far, right? and time here is also crucial. As an army is seldom distressed for provisions during the first three or four weeks of a campaign, whatever direction it takes, and afterwards can be assisted by magazines, we may very well say that by this method war has acquired the most perfect freedom of action right uh, this is a big deal it, it, it tells you pl very plastically very many how um, objectively these armies now are it's not that they're detached from these problems you, you understand they're hardly wired to it but at the same time the, the functionalization of that has has allowed now armies fundamentally to move uh, unrestrained. And Foucault says certain difficulties may be greater in one direction than in another, of course, and that may uh, carry weight in preliminary deliberation, but we can never encounter an absolute impossibility and the attention which is due to the subjects of subsistence can never decide a question imperatively. Mm -hmm. To this there is only one exception, which is a retreat through an enemy's country. So, basically, this system works all the time well, except in this circumstance, when you retreat to an enemy counter, because of the pressure naturally is put on you and on the army and on the uh, its own capacity to enlarge for s certain supplies. Now, see, Foucault says, in such a case, many of the inconveniences connected with subsistence meet together. It's a combination of factors. The operation is one of a continuous nature, generally carried on with a halt worth speaking of. There is therefore no time to procure provisions, right? Retreat here is happening because, as we've seen in the chapter of pursuit and retreat and so on, you are you're fleeing for an enemy that has demonstrated stronger than you, and therefore, if he he moves on, it's going to crush you. So you don't have the luxury of stopping and you know searching for supplies. It's now. Um, Therefore, no time to procure provisions. Then, the circumstances under which the operation commences are generally unfavorable, for obvious reasons. Um, and it is therefore necessary to keep the troops in masses, concentrated. We have seen it uh, in the chapter on retreat. Uh, at that point, you have to stay together to, to maintain an important control, not, not to, you know, to, to, to be ready to receive 
uh, even just in case of counterattack, you have to stay keep masses concentrated because you have proven that uh, you know if the enemy was able to to defeat you or you're retreating for that uh, in co concentrated masses it's not by splitting them that you're going to do anything better and you're already in that disfavorable situation um, and a dispersion in cantonments or even any considerable extension in the width of the column cannot be allowed we've seen in the previous paragraphs so fundamentally you can um, fix this problem of supplies on a, on a, um, at a local level by splitting the columns, right? So if you march uh, separately uh, for, you know, it, in, in, in you, you can do it, of course, that helps because you're basically attaching the army over a larger area that can provide, in fact, individually more, um, more, more supplies in proportion than one that is just concentrated, right? I said here you can't do that, right? Uh, then the hostile feeling of the country precludes the chance of any collection of contributions by mere orders issued with the support of a force capable of executing the order because you can't split forces so you can't even send uh, i mean you can't send s certain uh parties to uh, to collect uh, f sources but here you're marching in enemy territory retreating the population knows that you are done for uh and um they you, you can they, they will arm themselves and so the 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 smaller the parties you can detach from your mass that you want to keep uh, together and the higher the risk of you know being ambushed being cut down by the same peasantry and and lastly the moment is most suspicious for um well, excuse me, for it must be sure for the inhabitants to keep bent to their feelings back, so we're still, yes, this is it. And on account of all this, an army also situated is generally obliged to confine itself strictly to its previously prepared lines of communication and retreat. That is to say, it's easier for you at that point to go back the way you came, to the same path, uh, the same trail, because at least you have an idea. You might say, well, but then you may have spoiled those plays already. Well, in, in if you look at how the system of sus um, of subsistence works, it, it it shouldn't be the case. But naturally, yes, I mean, war surely hasn't had a such a, a nice effect in these places. But not necessarily. We've seen it, especially in the speedest campaigns, right, and where there was a lot of movement. There's not a significant damage for after months. I don't know to to come back the same way. Uh, you already know the places. Um, the, the, the the they also have an idea of what you are like um, that they know how to arrange themselves so that they can cope more easily to the idea of you coming now it's not new to them so even if they are hostile at heart at least they can't you know they can't hope that by serving you the, the thing will go faster away right and therefore it's actually a reasonable thing and here von Clausewitz conclude to do von Clausewitz concludes in fact with, with criticizing those the, the criticism towards Napoleon's choice in 1812 to retreat from Russia through the, the same um, the, 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 the same route he had come in, the route of invasion. He says, when Bonaparte had to retreat in 1812, he, it was impossible for him to do so by any other line but the one upon which he had advanced on account of the subsistence of his army. Right for that specific reason, and if he had attempted any other, he would have only plunged into more speedy and certain destruction. All the censor, therefore, passed on him by even French writers, as well as by other, uh, by others with regard to this point, is sheer nonsense. Right. Uh, that tells you how close this, but surely honest and and clear, and uh, that reflects the the critical capacities that we see displayed in here. Alright, so next time we'll talk about the base of operation that is... ah no, actually yes, excuse me, subsistence from magazines, in fact, that that was the last fourth paragraph base of operations in chapter 15. Alright, so for now we stop it here, just hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did please share it, otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me, I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye!